Eagles Entertainment. Hello, Eagles everywhere, and welcome to the Eagles Insider Podcast, presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro with you on this Wednesday. Hope everyone is healthy and safe and looking forward to the 2020 Eagles season. We're going to talk about that season in this podcast, at least the start and the end. We'll visit with Zach Selby, Redskins.com, and talk about the Washington Redskins who've got a new head coach and potentially a transformative defensive end by the name of Chase Young. We'll see how the Redskins are shaping up at this point in the offseason. We're also going to check back in with Nate Sudfeld, who I spoke with way back in March, just prior to free agency. Eagles re-signed him a one-year deal, and honestly, at the time, didn't really know how this quarterback room would shape out. Would the Eagles go out and sign a veteran? Would they draft somebody to develop? It turns out the Eagles shocked everybody with the selection of Jalen Hurts with the 53rd overall selection in the 2020 draft. So what does that mean for Nate Sudfeld? We'll find out in just a few moments from him as he also provides a peek into the Eagles' virtual offseason program. Very interesting stuff coming up from Nate Sudfeld. First, though, we'd like to talk about linebacker T.J. Edwards, Last year signed with the Eagles post-2019 NFL Draft. Didn't play a whole lot. Not much at all. But the Eagles really like what they saw from him in the meeting rooms, on the practice field, and in the limited time on the football field. And in fact, after the draft, just a couple of weeks ago, Howie Roseman, Eagles general manager, talked about Edwards in pretty glowing terms. You know, T.J. Edwards is a guy that we're extremely excited about. He's he's just got tremendous football instincts. Um, when you went back and watched all of his snaps last year, he's got pop at the point of attack, and, and he's going to get an opportunity. And so it stands to reason that T.J. Edwards, out of Wisconsin, good size, good athlete, knows the system, he has a chance to be a vital contributor to an Eagles linebacker room that really is undefined. With Edwards, with Nathan Gary, with Duke Riley, who the Eagles acquired in a trade last year from the Atlanta Falcons. How about Jatavis Brown, who played with the Chargers and played well with the Chargers. The Eagles signed him to a one-year deal in free agency. Eagles also used two of their 10 draft picks on linebackers. Davion Taylor in the third round, Sean Bradley later in the draft, round six. But certainly Edwards, well, he's got a shot. He knows it. And we caught up as he's living the life we're all living in quarantine. Where have you been throughout the uh, throughout this quarantine? Yeah, uh, I've been uh, between Appleton, Wisconsin, and uh, downtown Chicago. Oh my gosh, what is that uh, been yeah. like? I've been going uh, back and forth. I think at the start of this kind of whole thing, uh, just as everything started to shut down, I was lucky enough to still have a have a jam up in Appleton, which is where. Uh, my girlfriend's from so I was staying up there with her parents for probably about three weeks and then uh came back to Chicago where I'm from and uh stayed downtown and found a gym here where I'm I've been at for about the rest of the time so about a month oh so you've been able to you've been able to get all your workouts in there yeah yeah I've been able to keep up with the workouts which has been good there was about a week where there was you know I was calling gym owners to beg them to open up and stuff like that and then I finally got lucky and found one so it's uh it's been it's been different for sure so how, what has it been like for you mentally? I mean, not only the football side of it, year one to year two is supposed to be the year when you make your biggest jump, jump. but just from a lifestyle standpoint, it's been really crazy, I, I imagine. Yeah, no, it's been it's been nuts. I mean, I think the biggest thing right now is uh, I've been able to spend a lot of time with family, and um, which is which has been cool because, you know, obviously being in college those past five years, don't really have that much time with family and stuff like that. So it was good to kind of sit back and relax for a little bit right after the season with the fam and then it's uh you know business as usual right back to work so did, when when you got back after the 2019 season and you kind of put it in perspective uh what did you remember from your rookie year um i mean it was a it was a whirlwind i think uh you know first stepping into the facilities into the uh, locker room you know you're in kind of like shocked that you're with you know, all those guys that you've looked up to for a long time and 
um, it was uh, it was it was crazy from the start. But then I, you know you kind of just get used to it, and you kind of realize that uh, football is football. You kind of have to adjust to the the speed and the obviously the, the level of the guys, which is um, a lot higher at this level. So it's been it, it was a good year, man. A lot of a lot of firsts, and uh, I think I learned a lot too. You know, I always wondered that, and fans always wondered. Did you feel accepted when you walked into the locker room? Did you feel intimidated? I mean, what kind of what kind of reactions did you have? What kind of emotions did you have? Um, I mean, it was more so just like you know a realization, like all right, like you know, I'm I'm here now. It's, it's what are you gonna do with it? And um, I think my biggest thing was I just wanted to show that uh, I belonged and show that I was um, part of the group. So the biggest thing for me was trying to earn the respect of the guys around me and not, not by like talking or anything like that, but just by actions and just by trying to go out and play my best football, to be honest with you. Do you think that there are guys who, if you were not as mentally strong, that it could, it, it could overwhelm you with the rate, the, the pace of everything, the, the, you know, walking and seeing all these guys you'd seen on TV and this gigantic media crew that comes in every day <laughs> in the locker room. I mean, for yeah. some, for some people, it, it, I would imagine it's very intimidating. Yeah, I mean it was uh, it was definitely different. And our our lockers are right next to the the O line, so you know every there's a lot of media over there, and we had you know Nigel. So it's my first kind of glimpse at that was it was it was nuts I think to see. Um, but yeah, I mean I, I definitely think if you're not mentally ready, if you're not mentally ready just to play good football, and you kind of get taken in by all the all the stars and stuff that are around you, and if you're not trying to get better every day, it can definitely kind of um, overwhelm you at first. Uh, but I think, you know, I did a pretty good job of trying to manage that at least. TJ, why do you think you overcame all the odds and made the team? And, and now the Eagles are really excited to see you and get, you have a chance to get really significant playing time in year two. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, you know, I, I, I'm sure a lot of guys say this, but I firmly believe it. Uh, Wisconsin really helped me kind of get ready for this level in terms of every time we stepped into that building, it was, it was professional. It was, it was business. Um, in terms of you have to know what you're doing, you have to handle all the stuff on the outside. You also have to play really good football. So I think it's kind of the same at this level. Obviously, things just move a little quicker, and there's less time for um, you know coaches to teach you things because it's it's time to to whether you know it or you don't. You know you got to go out there in the, on the field and, and show what you got. So I think you know a lot of aspects. Wisconsin helped me a lot with that kind of uh, preparation. Do you remember uh, kind of when it? clicked in that you were good enough to be on the roster? Um, I mean, I think there was a couple that, – that last preseason game where um, I really took majority of the reps at, at backer, I really felt um, kind of at home and just throughout the practices really getting comfortable with uh, special teams and knowing that uh, my biggest role on the team last year was going to be special teams. So that I, had, I had to really do well at that and – show every day that I was, you know, wanted to be there and that I wanted to be a part of that unit. Um, and I think that's something that really helped me a lot. How, how different was preseason to the regular season in terms of, temp, <laughs> in terms of tempo and all that? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a big jump, I think. I mean, I think that first, I still remember my first uh, punt rep against Washington, that, that home opener. My I, I felt like my, like I had no clue what was going on. I could, I remember coming off the field after the first punt rep and, uh, coach asked me like what I saw. I was like, I honestly couldn't tell you. Like, I have no clue. I was just kind of running and <laughs> trying to find the ball. And I think after that first couple of games, it started to settle down and started to, um, you know, really just realize that it's it's still football and, and still have to read your keys and things like that. Why why is it so different? Is it because these are the starters who are playing? Is it because it's the regular season and naturally the tempo is going to be higher? Why do you think there's such a difference preseason to regular season? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's just me, but it felt like, um, I mean, obviously, I think just everyone on that field is is so talented and so technically sound that you really have to be at your best every single snap. Um, so for me, it was just trying to, I think at first I was trying to see way too much and trying to do too many things um, in terms of, you know, filling lanes and, and things like that. But I just think the tempo is a lot, a lot quicker in regular season. Um, and fine, I think the the idea in your head is like, all right, like it's it's the regular season, you know, you're here, and it's what are you going to do at that moment? And so let's let's not talk about the past anymore. Let's talk about 2020. And yeah. why do you think at this point, TJ, you're going to be a better football player than you were as a rookie? I think a lot of it has to do with me uh, knowing a little bit of what to expect when I show up in the building, whenever that is. Um, but just knowing kind of what. 
I'm going to have to do to, to prove myself and knowing that, um, you know, the, the pressure is on. So I got to be, have to be at my best this off season at all times. And I've definitely uh, tried to do that, but I'm excited to get back and excited to, to get around the guys again and, um, you know, see what the, see what the future holds. What kind of gains have you made with your workouts in the off season? I think um, the biggest thing for me was I got to get back to some of the things that I think helped me a lot in, um, in the past, which was, more um more explosion like workouts so just getting back to olympic lifts and getting stronger with those and being able to do kind of uh throughout the at least that that first couple month and a half my own my own program of what i think my body needs and then now getting with the strength coaches um and getting getting into that program and being able to build off of the things that i've done kind of early on this off season so it's been it's been good and i think um you know, i've definitely made a, a big improvement you're in this virtual program now right yeah, yeah, just got back from workout actually. So what do you do? Like I don't even I, I can imagine <laughs> I can imagine Ken Flagel who I I imagine he's, he's figured out the computer situation at this yeah. point. Um, <laughs> yeah. Does he does he have a blackboard like a, a whiteboard or a what is he what's he do? I mean, uh so we actually start virtual meetings this upcoming Monday, so I'll see kind of my at first hand what Coach Flage has in store. Um but I I'd assume it's gonna be they're able to kind of put up their their computer and see the the film clips that they're watching, so we're able to kind of all watch at the same time. And it's basically uh, one big FaceTime call with the whole linebacker groups. So like right now, we're doing uh, lifts with uh, with our strength, strength coach Eddie Greer, and he's kind of putting us through a workout um, and trying to coach us all at one time, kind of on the on these you know FaceTime calls, really. Uh, so it's definitely been interesting, but. Uh, the staff has definitely done a good job, and just talking to other LBs, you can you can definitely tell that it's it's helping, and, it, and it's kind of good to get back in the system and um, at least, you know at least see those other guys' faces and, and interact with them a little bit more. Yeah, is the camaraderie? I mean, you're a young guy, so this is not totally right. foreign to you communicating via the telephone. But have yeah. you been able to build some camaraderie with the guys? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, you know, I think, I mean, definitely the linebackers have tried to stay in touch this whole you know throughout the whole off season, and now getting back to where we're all working out together and kind of working towards that same goal again, even though it's, it's online, but you know, we're still, we're still kind of seeing each other's faces and making jokes and um, getting back to things as, as normal as possible as we can, to be honest with you. Huh. And the rest of your life is, are you still out there in, are you still in lockdown out there? Yeah. Um, Chicago's pretty locked down and um, there's no, no telling when it'll kind of open back up. Um, it's, it's weird. You know, I was on, um, Michigan Ave the other day, which is normally the biggest, the busiest street in Chicago. And there wasn't, wasn't a car driving down the street or people walking at all. So it's, uh, it's, it's a ghost town for the most part, which is, which is weird to see, but, um, just trying to, you know, put things in perspective and trying to, uh, get better as best as I can with these, uh, circumstances. Have you dived into television or books or <laughs> taking up new hobbies or anything? Um, a little bit. I've tried to uh, I try to stay away from the TV and video games as much as possible, but it has not worked that much up to this point. Uh, it's hard not to just turn on the Xbox every once in a while. Um, but now that you know the the off season has really started and the the playbooks are coming back, we can start to really dive into those and, and get back on track with with things. So it's been it's been a little combo of both of working out and Xbox and film. <laughs> wow, man, it's so weird. Isn't it? It's like you really don't know when it's gonna kick back in. No, it's it's really weird. I mean, I know Chicago will probably be on lockdown for quite a bit longer. Um, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I think even when things open up, it'll be it'll be a lot different than what we're used to. So it'll be uh, it'll be interesting. Are you uh, as your family? Do you feel like you're 15 years old again, laying in your family's couch and doing all the <laughs> things you did when you were in high school? A hundred percent. Getting done from a workout and then going downstairs, kind of uh, turn on the Xbox, turn on the film away from the away from the parents, and come back up for dinner. And you know, dinner's made, which is nice. And uh, so it's it's definitely been definitely been a little uh, nostalgic coming back home. But it's it's, it's been <laughs> fun, man, being with the family again. Yeah, it teaches. So you can watch you can watch game film and you can study from last year and what and and get better that way. Yeah, yeah, we can do all those things mentally, which is really nice. So there's uh. You know, we got our iPads, we got our playbooks and everything like that, so we can really dive into it and um, been able to talk with some of the linebackers on things and just, um, you know, making sure my mind's right for when we come back. So the way the Eagles talk, it sounds like you've got an opportunity to really be a factor this year. How do you feel about what's ahead? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I've kind of taken it 
I've done you know, done it in the past where I'm just taking it day by day and trying to get trying to get better as much as I can to help this football team. You know, I don't know what the future holds, but um, I definitely want to be a part of it, and I want to make sure that I'm playing my best football come come camp when it's time to really throw on the pads and show, um, you know, who who's who's going to be those guys. And I definitely want to contribute as much as I can. So just got to try to keep my head down and keep working and um, show up when it's time to show up. And last year was a, a confidence booster for you. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, may, being able to make some plays kind of late in the year, and um, you know, I played a little bit of base towards the end. Um, and really, I learned a lot from those guys like Nigel and uh, Kamu and Nate Gary and those guys, just kind of seeing how they do things and seeing how they how they prep for games, seeing how they prep for practice. So it really, it really uh, kind of opened my eyes to some new routines. And um, you know, I'm just I'm just ready to get going for this next season and ready to ready to show um, what I've been doing. Well, uh, good luck to you the rest of the off season. Um, stay healthy. And, yeah, you, uh, you as well, man. Yeah, man. And we'll see you back in Philly when, whenever, whenever we're allowed to get back to Philly. <laughs> whenever, whenever we can. No, it's. Uh, I appreciate it, man. It's been, it's been good talking to you. Been good talking to some Philly people. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, thanks so much. Thanks so much for your time. And, and again, take care. Yeah, you too, Dave. Thanks, thanks man. Thanks, CJ. All right, man. Yep. See ya. Now let's move to the quarterback room as we revisit with Nate Sudfeld. So, Nate, the last time we spoke, uh, you had just signed back on for a year, and we're really looking forward to this year. And I wondered if in the back of your mind you're thinking, you know, they still might sign a veteran quarterback. And now it looks like that's not going to happen. I don't know. What was going through your mind? Uh, yeah, no. I, uh, yeah, they told me that there was chances that um, they'd bring in another quarterback, whether it was a veteran or, or, uh, or a rookie. and and really that didn't factor too much into my decision making um and still i would say that's the same way uh i was just you know looking at it for the situation that i could bring to the table and what um you know what i what opportunity i would have and how i'd fit with the the coaching staff and uh yeah i was just kind of looking more for me not necessarily cuz i mean wherever you go there's going to be other quarterbacks coming in so that didn't play that huge of a uh, role into coming back. And now it looks like there's, you're clearly the number two. Uh, just, I mean, does that change your mindset at all? No, man. I, I, I'm, I'm just really looking forward to when all this stuff dies down with the, with the COVID and I can just kind of get back to work because, you know, I'm excited about the guy we got. I think Jalen's an incredible teammate and player. And uh, I think he's going to have a great long career. And then Kyle's awesome too. And then obviously Carson, I think the better you can have, uh, you know, a quarterback room from top to bottom. I mean, we, we've been very fortunate to have really strong quarterback rooms since I've been in Philly. So I just think that really benefits everyone. It benefits the team. You know, somebody goes down next man up. Um, but the, at the same time, just kind of the way that we're, we're all able to be in the quarterback room and kind of develop together and learn from each other and, feed off each other everyone kind of makes it dramatic or a big deal but once you're kind of in that quarterback room it's a lot of helping each other out and everyone is getting better and and it's never really weird at all so just looking forward to kind of getting back into the room together with guys and and uh getting to work in the meantime you're in this virtual room um have you taken part in the off-season program the virtual program and if so what is it like yeah, it's incredible, man. I mean, our video guys, Pat Dolan's doing an incredible job. Um, so we have, you know, our team meetings and our position meetings and then workouts. But being a returning free agent, I'm not allowed to be a part of the official uh, virtual workouts. So uh, fortunately, I'm able to connect with the strength coach and kind of get a plan and and been getting some great workouts uh, regardless. But I am a part of the, the film and the the meetings and the talking about concepts and the team uh, goals for the year. And that stuff's been so, so great. It's, 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 it's insane that we're able to do all this stuff and we can watch film together on, uh, you know, on zoom or it, we call it Microsoft teams. It's just so crazy because, you know, press will be, we'll be talking about, you know, concepts and then he'll be like, Hey, let's watch this. And then he'll change the screen to where we don't see each other. And then it's just his computer screen and we're watching the film and I didn't realize it would be so effective. Um, I, you know, I had no idea what to expect going into virtual off season, but 
so far it's been pleasantly, you know, really surprising how, how well it's gone. How comfortable is press in that environment? I mean, is it as seamless as it could possibly be instead of being in a classroom at Novacare, he's in his living room or his basement or wherever he is, and you're all still seeing the same stuff. Yeah, it, it's honestly, um, yeah, gone really well. And press does a tremendous job. Um, obviously, I mean, he, he's a reason I wanted to come back because I really like working with press. I believe in him. I think he's got a tremendous mind and he, uh, and he's so organized and detail oriented. It's just nice to be around a guy that, you know, you really can trust with the details and you know, when he tells you something that he's thought about it, and, you know, and, and then there's some good uh, dialogue between us and press and, um, but yeah, he's doing a great job with it, but yeah, it still, again, blows my mind that, you know, we're 3000 miles apart and, and we're having real time conversations with video, with audio, with all of it. And it's really like we're in the meeting in Nova care, like you said. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how the future is going to look, but this is working for, for OTAs so far well, we're making the most of it. Nate, you're in Oregon, so has it loosened up enough out there where you're able to get on field and, and throw the football at all? To this point, it's mid-May. You'd normally be on the field throwing a lot. <laughs> right, yeah. It's uh, not super loose, uh, but I've got, you know, on some days I can kind of find my way onto a field. And then, like I said before, I'm fortunate to have brothers who are out here who I can throw to. Um, so I don't have to worry about social distancing with them because, uh, we've been quarantined together, uh, as a family, which has been really, really awesome. I'm very blessed to be able to be in that situation. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not super easy and I'm still doing all my lifts and workouts out of my garage. Um, but I've got, I mean, the Eagles were able to help me with getting some equipment and, and, uh, and so, so that's worked out, but. Yeah, getting to the field isn't as easy as you'd like it to be, but I'm making it work. You're like you're 15 years old. I, I said this to TJ Edwards. You're like you're 15 years old again, right? You're like laying around. Mom and dad are taking care of you. And <laughs> are, are you cleaning up your plates more than you did when you were 15 years old? <laughs> <laughs> so fortunately, I've been able to move out, and I'm, I'm 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 on my own. But for a couple of weeks, we're all under the same roof, so we're in the same town, my whole family. But I've got my own place. So, but yes, I'm kind of a by myself, kind of a neat freak a little bit anyway and uh i've grown to be a little bit on the ocd spectrum of cleaning uh i don't know i think being a part of a big family i have four siblings i was always you know it was always you know not super messy house but it's hard to not be a little chaotic when there's seven people in the family so then when i kind of went on my own to college and then the nfl and having my own place i've always enjoyed keeping it tidy because i'm like i can control this now not you know four siblings running around and parents and dog whatever but so yeah it's, it's been fun and i've been making sure to keep it clean <laughs> nate last one uh, how has it been kind of reestablishing camaraderie with your teammates i mean have there been zoom happy hours with the eagles or anything that all the other people in the country and the world are doing to to, to stay in touch with everybody yeah that's uh haven't quite done a zoom zoom happy hour yet that's a great idea uh i did it with some college friends once which was fun but i I should do that with some teammates but we've been connecting via text facetime more individual but the group idea is actually a great idea that um that i should definitely do Um, say what give it a shot it's a lot of fun yeah no doubt i will yeah we'll have to make sure we're drinking the same thing and uh then and start telling stories or talking, talking exactly. ball or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> hey, man, thanks so much. Thanks, Dave. Can't wait to see you back in Philadelphia. Yeah. Hopefully it's soon. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Take care. Have a great day. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Time now on the Eagles Insider Podcast to get our first look at the Washington Redskins. The Eagles opening the 2020 regular season at FedEx Field, and then finishing the regular season January 3rd at Lincoln Financial Field against the Washington Redskins. And here to talk about the Redskins from Redskins.com, Zach Selby. Zach, I hope you're doing okay there. And, um, boy, it's interesting. You guys get a new head coach. You get the second pick in the draft. And, you know, you really don't – I guess you don't really have a feel for what that team is all about given – the separation that we are going through in this world right now. 
Well, it is definitely difficult given the situation. I mean, how many other times in NFL history has has a, has a head coach been under this much uncertainty and all this craziness happening? Right, it's probably unprecedented, but. I think that he, I will give uh, Ron Rivera credit. He has tried to be as open and as honest about the process with with everybody around uh, the build, uh, well, the facility, you know, the organization about you know just what he wants to build. And I think the theme is he wants to create competition and he wants to create versatility in those competitions, no matter what he's doing. I mean, you obviously have. You know, getting Chase Young, he's going to contribute immediately. But you have a lot of other questions on, on the team that you really want to figure out what you got. And I think that's been the motivating force is you've got to find a lot of players in different positions that can play a lot of different roles. And he's just going to let them throw, throw them out there and see, and see what he has uh, whenever we're allowed to go back for training camp. Yeah, we know Ron Rivera very well, a uh, former Defensive coach here, um, great guy, by the way. Love him. Wish yeah. him the best of luck with Washington. All right, let's talk about some of the personnel moves. Free agency, not that blockbuster move. Instead, it looked like the Redskins kind of added some low-risk, high-reward kind of players. Ronald Darby, uh, an Eagle, former Eagles cornerback, for example. Is that how you kind of read free agency? Yeah, I think that's really what the that's, that's really, when you look at it from from the outside view. That's kind of what they were going along. They had, they added a lot of players, but like you said, they really weren't the the blockbuster guys. Maybe you could say maybe Kendall Fuller is sort of like the uh, the fringe guy that you could say a blockbuster. But they did try. Um, they had he did go on record and say that they did try to to get Amari Cooper. Um, they offered him a substantial amount of money that, and he just decided to go back to Dallas, which you know, that's his decision, and, you know, we all, we all wish him the best in that regard. But I think, you know, he's, he has said that they, they really, he, A, wanted to fit, like, fill needs, and, B, they wanted to find fringe starter guys that were really looking for an opportunity to show what they're worth. That's why another theme is that they were most of them were on one-year sort of "Quote unquote prove it" deals. I mean, you see, I think the biggest one that that um, that really impressed me was Sean Davis, the safety out of, out of Pittsburgh, before he came over here, and he um, he has I think I think he has like five interceptions in four years. He played a lot um, in the first three years of his career, but an injury kind of uh, kind of uh, sideswiped him, and really kind of I think he only played one game in 2019, but. Yeah, that that's really been the theme is just finding finding guys that are really looking to fill the needs and create the competition again, like I said. In the draft, I mean, it, there were all these rumors and rumblings that maybe the Redskins would go away from Chase Young at number two overall. They stayed there. They have a player now who adds to a great front seven. I mean, the Redskins see him as somebody who's really going to help transform this defense. Uh, absolutely. I think I think if you listen to um, a defensive corner, Jack Del Rio, he loved this guy. I mean, he said that he don't think, he doesn't think he's ever seen a player come out of the draft with this many tools already in his skill set. I mean, and that and that says a lot. If you look at some of the players that Jack Del Rio has worked with, you have Julius Peppers, you have Von Miller, you have Khalil Mack, and according to him, none of those guys really have the skill set that, they, that that he that Chase Young has coming out day one of the draft. And, I mean, you look at what this, this defensive line is going to be. You have you, you have four first round – or three first round picks in the past few years. And, I mean, I, th- I think what they really were looking for, and Ron Rivera said this after he was – after Chase was drafted, was that they were looking for kind of the final piece to really make this thing go and – what what a piece really to get you know what 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 a lot of people call the best overall player in the draft in Chase Young so I think that they I think that's what they come in to expect for him to be the immediate game changer that everyone expected him to be. Zach, what are your three questions about the Redskins as we talk right now in mid May as we look forward to September 13th at FedEx Field? Well, I think the first, the, I think the biggest question for me is who is going to fill the left guard spot now? I mean, you obviously have you have Brandon Sheriff on the right side; he's going to fill that role. But then you have the left side, which you know you had the left left tackle Trent Williams trade away to the San Francisco 49ers, and then you have the left guard position 
uh, that was uh, opened after Eric Sauer left to Miami. And I think that's one of the things that they have tried to figure out and address. They've, dra- they've either signed or drafted six offensive linemen in the past two months, and that's the most they've had in any position. I think they want to figure out what that what they want, what they're going to find in that position out of the guys they, they have on the roster. I think the second question is going to be, who's going to be the number two receiver? Um, I mean, you have Terry McLaurin. Obviously, he's going to be their number one option probably for the for the next three years at least, and hopefully even longer than that. But you have you have a lot of players, uh, you know, veterans and rookie guys, or you know, younger younger guys who who they really see a lot of intangibles in, and they want to figure out what the what they're going to have if they just throw them out there in competition. I mean, I think they really have high expectations for Antonio Gandy Golden. I mean, he has the the size. I think he's uh, three inches taller and twenty pounds heavier than than Terry is, and he has the ability to just come down with the ball in his hands, win, win those fifty fifty matchups. I think they they're going to look at him, seeing if he can contribute immediately. But either way, they have to find a complimentary option to him. The other spot I, I think that I'm really intrigued to see is how the linebackers are going to work out. I mean, obviously you have the defensive line, and the rotation. I think there's going to be enough talent. On there, where you can you can find a good rotation week in and week out, but the linebackers are very interesting to me because you have Thomas Davis, who is who has been with Ron Rivera for years now after taking a year off and going to the San Diego Chargers, now the Los Angeles Chargers, and I think that's going to be interesting to see where he fits. I mean, he's he's been in the league for going on two decades now, but somehow he still finds a way to contribute a lot and be a big key of the defense, and then. You also have John Bostic. Um, John Bostic was the starting Mike last year, and he came in on a one-year deal and pretty much just started leading the defense from, from day one. So, and, he, and then on top of that, you also have Cole Holcomb, who who showed a lot of promise in his rookie year as well. So I think they have a lot of good, talented players on all ends of the scale for linebackers. And finding out which three are going to be your your day one guys in week one. I think that's going to be the question that Del Rio and Rivera, both linebackers themselves, really want to figure out who's going to lead this new 4-3 defense for them. Interesting that you didn't mention Dwayne Haskins, but again, with the way we saw Dwayne Haskins play late in December last year, very impressive, the progress he seemed to make in his rookie year. you have big hopes for him in year two? Yeah, I do. I think that's that's the expectation of a lot of people in the in the organization. I think, you know, one of the reasons that I didn't really include him was because well, well a because of the 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 production that he had in the last month of the season. But I also think that this this coaching staff is behind him. I think I think um, trading trading for Kyle Allen really proved that. And I mean, I think I think Rivera even said that you know I think a lot of people were saying that they there were rumors that they make they might get you know two with that number two pick, but Rivera pretty much shot that down and said no we we believe that we believe that Dwayne Haskins is going to go in uh, to Week One as the starter, and I th- I think that shows a lot of confidence. Um, I I think that you see you see the production that he had, and I think you really you really want to see what he's going to do in this new offense with Scott Turner. I think you need to give him a chance and for now he's the guy they're going they're going to build this offense around and I think that I think that's going to be their plan going forward. Zach, thank you so much. Stay safe. See you in September. You do the same, babe. Have a good one. Take care. And that will do it for this Eagles Insider podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Eagles Insider Dave Spitter with you. Thanks to Peter Kelly and Ray Doyle for their work putting this all together. Thanks to all of you for listening each and every episode. Our audience is growing and growing, and we love the feedback. If you have a moment to drop us a rating, please do so. There's a link in the details section of your podcast library. Thanks so much, everybody. Have yourselves a great Eagles day, and fly, Eagles, fly.